Two games into the preseason and the Warriors have cut Mac McClung from the roster. Not only have they cut McClung, but they also signed Ty Jerome, a former Phoenix Suns and Oklahoma City guard. To some, the release of Mac was shocking considering how well he played during the summer league as well as in Japan. Mac displayed a lot of handling skills, athleticism, as well as the ability to pass. His shooting seemed to have been coming along too, so what gives? During the summer league, Mac had over 13 points per game and shot 50% from deep over 5 games. While in Japan, he played in only the second preseason game versus the Wizards where he was a plus 20 off the bench with 9 points and 4 of 6 from the field. His performances while with the Warriors were not that bad. I'd go as far as to say that he was one of the better performers the Warriors signed in the offseason to the training camp roster. I covered Mac's overall stats in a prior video when the Warriors signed him to the contract, so if you'd like to get more details on that, check out the link here in the top right of your screen. But let's keep going. Mac has done everything the Warriors have asked of him, but he still gets cut. Now, immediately, the first thing we want to pivot to is the second move the Warriors made, which was signing Ty Jerome as a replacement for McClung. While the signing of Ty is clearly in response to moving Mac, this still leaves a lot of questions. Some of you may even be thinking that the Warriors just got rid of a promising player for a player who played like utter garbage last year, and you might be right. What the heck is the front office doing, right? Has Bob Myers lost his mind? Okay, let's step back a bit here before we jump to conclusions. What the Warriors just did was a mini power move. This wasn't something they deliberated on whatsoever. Ty Jerome was not even cleared off waivers before the Warriors jumped on the opportunity to sign him and get rid of McClung. In all the commotion on the signing of Mac, some didn't even realize they also moved Travion Williams and picked up Anthony Lamb in the training camp spot. What's crazy is they don't even play the same positions, with Williams being a small ball center stretch 5 and Lamb being a small forward. Lamb barely played any minutes on the Spurs last year and may be on his way out of the league with only 2 years so far on his resume. There are a lot of questions to answer with these signings and today we'll be discussing all the above to get you guys up to speed on what's going on with the franchise. So if you guys recall, just 4 months ago, and honestly I can't even believe it's been that long, the Warriors regained the title as NBA champions. In case you missed it, Steph Curry rocked the entire league to sleep and snatched the finals MVP simply to shut up the critics. There was a huge parade with Draymond acting a fool and uh, Jordan Poole and Wiggins stayed up every night for the next two months counting up the money they're going to have when they sign their next contract. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Why is this important to anything we're discussing, you ask? Well, this makes us the freaking defending champions of the league, that's what. And being the defending champions means everybody's got their eyes on you for the upcoming season. Every other team watched you on the big stage and saw how you won. They're going to be coming after you next year. This means the Warriors front office can't sit on their collective assets during the offseason. Even if we didn't lose Peyton, Porter Jr., and JTA. They still have to find ways to make this team better than it was last year. The fact that the core guys are still intact is the first part of the equation. The young core and lottery picks the Warriors picked up are the second piece of the puzzle. But the Warriors still need some insurance for some fluidity between the starting lineup and the bench. A team needs three elements in their roster to compete for a championship. A competitive starting lineup with two or more players playing at or above an all-star level. A bench with veterans that establishes a floor for the overall team performance. And some young players to help reduce the load on both the first two elements of starters and veteran bench players throughout the regular season. Vets need minutes to build chemistry and the young players need minutes to establish themselves as competitors in the league. The Warriors have done such an incredible job with drafting and signing players. The young core of the dubs project to be at or near the top of the league while the main core are still playing at the highest level of basketball. This has attracted some of the best veteran players for the Warriors to come off the bench including players like Porter Jr. last year and Dante DiVincenzo and Jamichael Green this year. This still leaves a few spots available for players to be signed however and at the end of the summer league the Warriors picked up some players that were available including McClung and Williams. These guys worked to compete for a roster spot but chances were very low that McClung would be signed to a guaranteed contract. If anything it was likely he'd play for the Santa Cruz Warriors. And this was the trajectory that the Warriors had him on until something else happened. That something else was Ty Jerome becoming available. 
or more specifically, a more experienced guard with more size and consequently better ability to switch and defend other positions became available. It wasn't that McClung did anything wrong. There are just some things a player can't learn and when you have a business, you can't sit on your assets. You need to ensure you acquire the best assets that give you the best chances to win. Okay, still not convinced this is a good enough reason to sign Jerome? Think about what has been a pillar of the Warriors championship DNA these past years. What has been the reason the Warriors have been winning championships? I can guarantee a number of you are saying the three point shot and you couldn't be more wrong. While the three has been important to the Warriors, it is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the Warriors winning championships. As a matter of fact, the threat of threes has been even more instrumental to the Warriors game than the actual three itself. But that still pales in comparison to the hallmark of the Warriors winning ways. That has been the team's impenetrable defense. The Warriors have consistently been the top defensive team in the league every year they've won a championship in recent years. Except 2017 and 2018. Hmm, I wonder what was different during those years. Either way, in 2018, the Dubs were actually ranked 11th, and in 2017, they were still near the top with the second spot. That being said, you can see how important it is that the Warriors have a major focus on defense. Hopefully by this time, you're starting to piece this puzzle together. Now let's go even further. In order for a player to earn minutes on this team, they have to be able to handle their own on defense. This means if you are allowing guys to blow by you and get easy baskets, you are not getting minutes. One of Travion Williams' weaknesses was this exact issue. He was very lackadaisical on defense and allowed players to easily get by him. While he was somewhat effective on the other end of the court, he was also undersized for the position. The Warriors have a ton of guys that can bring it offensively, so this alone will not get you minutes. With the current main core and young core players projecting to be all-stars or even better, the only hope these training camp roster signings have is to make sure they don't allow opposing players to get the better of them. This is why Weatherspoon, despite having a limited offensive game, is still able to maintain a spot. A two-way, but a spot nonetheless. All that being said, it's quite amazing that Steph Curry has such a reputation in the NBA as being a bad defender when it couldn't be further from the truth. Steph Curry is a smart defender, and not enough gets said about what he does on that end of the floor. That is a video for another day, however. Just remember this, Steph Curry invented the team that gave up a good shot for a great shot. The second half of that phrase is, switch out a good defender for a better defender. This is why the Dubs moved on from Mac McClung for Ty Jerome. So what does Ty Jerome bring to the team offensively? He's currently averaging 7 points, 2 rebounds and 2.5 and assists while shooting 40% from the field and 34% from 3. While his 3 point percentage doesn't seem all that impressive, it really took a hit his second year with OKC. His first year saw him shoot 42% on 5 attempts per game while last year he only shot 29%. To add some further perspective, he only shot 28% from distance while with Phoenix on less than 2 attempts per game. Some publications are saying that Ty Jerome's poor shooting in 2022 was because of the poor floor spacing of the team in general. They were only slightly better in 2021, however, yet that's when Jerome drained 42% from deep. All that being said, Jerome is known for being a fairly good shooter and with his average still at 34%, the Warriors are giving him a shot with a training camp signing to see if this can actually work. My guess is that if his 3 point percentage was higher for last season, the Warriors would have immediately given him a guaranteed contract. They signed this kid in such a hurry, I'm inclined to think that they're thinking he'll be able to make the team and get that 15th spot on the roster. They for sure view him as a better overall prospect than Mac. Despite that, however, Steve Kerr had this to say about Mac's release. I think we were um, interested in a more pass first point guard. You know, letting Mac go was tough. I love Mac and I think he's an NBA player. For our roster, we needed more of a, a pass first guy. And uh, Ty is a very intriguing player because of his size and his ability to see over the top of the defense, his pick and roll play. So it's a great opportunity for us to get a look at him and for him to uh, play with our guys. Another thing I want to mention is that if McClung makes a team this year, he will have as many years in the league as he has career games played. 2. That experience really hurt Mac's ability to stay on the Warriors roster. Regarding Kerr's comments on the team looking for a pass first guy, this is also an important point. This was the problem the Warriors ran into a couple of years back with, if you remember this guy, Brad Wanamaker. 
a rather small player that didn't facilitate to quite the level the team would need to get our young players touches. This means guys like Wiseman, Kaminga, and Moody, etc. would be handicapped somewhat with their abilities on the floor. That's certainly a factor, but I'm quite certain the majority of the reasoning is what I've mentioned before. Another factor to consider is that Kerr is thinking about Ryan Rollins and the fact that there's too much overlap between Rollins and McClung when you already have a player like Poole coming off the bench. The Warriors want to establish a floor and prioritize players that will be able to handle the defensive assignments. The team understands how crucial this is to winning and without attacking McClung or hurting his chances with another team by being overtly critical, he simply stated he wanted a pass first point guard. Well, let's consider the fact that an elite passer in Travion Williams was actually just passed on. Ty Jerome isn't more of a pass first in my opinion, but no one will argue with looking for players with higher floors and potentially lower ceilings for your backups. To top it all off, Ty Jerome was a first round draft pick whereas Mack was undrafted, so the reasons for choosing Jerome over Mack are quite overwhelming at this point. The last thing I wanted to mention is the team signing Anthony Lamb as a replacement for Travion Williams. If you've paid attention up to this point, then you know exactly why the Warriors did this signing. Lamb is an established NBA player with plenty of experience and shoots rather efficiently from the free throw line. There is the possibility that this could pan out somewhat in the near future where it translates to his 3 point shooting and if it does, the dubs could bring him up from Santa Cruz where I'm expecting they will play him for the majority of the season. At this point, the Warriors only need guys with size that can defend at an elite level. While Lamb only has one year of experience, I suspect Williams needed quite a bit of work on defense and there really was no way to ensure his abilities would translate this year, whereas Lamb could feasibly see playing time through a call up as an injury replacement for a player at the end of the bench. Let me know if you agree with my assessment on the situation with Mac and post them in the comments below. I'll follow this video with a poll, who do you prefer, Ty Jerome or Matt McClung? Thanks for watching. Till next time, swish.